the very first time I ate magic mushrooms was my first summer back from college. I was back home and with one of my old high school buddies who we had smoked weed back in high school a little bit. I wasn't really a big drug user or anything like that. So just smoked a little bit of weed and uh, had had a couple drinks my first year in college, but really hadn't gone any kind of major psychedelic route at all. And my friend came to me and he said that he had some mushrooms that he wanted to try, but he was scared. So he asked me if I wanted to do it with him. So we were at my parents' house and there's a separate little house where we have a pool table and kind of hang out. So unbeknownst to my parents, we ate some mushrooms. I'm not even sure how much. I think a relatively small amount. I guess maybe a gram and a half to two grams, something like that. And it was definitely a, a strange experience. I remember thinking different thoughts and we played pool and we just kind of joked around. It wasn't really too profound of a first experience. But I remember my friend called me the next day and I mean, we hung out the whole night. He drove home. Everything seemed fine. He called me the next day. He said that when he got home, he completely forgot who he was. And I said, what do you mean you forgot who, who you were? And he said he had no idea who he was. He didn't know where he was. He didn't know anything. This is after driving home. Um, maybe they kicked into a deeper level. And he said that it really scared him. And he did some research on the internet and found that what had happened to him is called ego death. And neither of us had heard of this before. And he was kind of shaken by this experience. Myself, I had a pretty mild experience. And I remember kind of being up a little bit later. I couldn't sleep. I just had lots of inspired ideas. Mine was a pretty pleasant experience. But... I became aware that there are some potential dangers perhaps with psychedelics or just some un, just some effects that can be hard to cope with or understand. And he ended up having another ego death experience the second time we ate mushrooms and he felt really weary about ever doing it again. And so I I didn't eat mushrooms again until when I was in college, uh, maybe a couple years later. And for the most part, my experience with psychedelics or, or drugs was just cautiously explorative and recreational. But I began a, a, a new phase of psychedelic exploration after being introduced to a perspective by my friend Benjamin, who's one of my oldest friends. He's the a friend that I had on the Burning Man episode, episode 12. Uh, I've known him 16 years. And sometime around 2009, he introduced me to the perspective that, that Native peoples of this land, Native Americans, but also Native people around the world, uh, had traditions of eating mushrooms or peyote or different psychedelic plants and having shamanic experiences and spiritual experiences and not just for the purposes of having fun and then in fact that's that's something that they would never do because in their culture they consider these substances to be sacred and basically ways to access the divine and when he explain this to me, it made total sense. It's not something I had ever heard of before, but just having had the few experiences that I've had, that I had had at that point, something clicked in me where I, I realized like, oh wow, like if you take these things with the intention of going deeper into yourself or with the intention of di discovering or exploring the potential there that I might be able to have a much deeper experience. And for some reason now, this seems so obvious. I can't believe that I 
it didn't occur to me before, but that's just not how I had ever taken them. I just would always take them with my friends, run around the woods and just giggle and look at plants and watch moss breathe and stuff like that. So in 2009 and 2010, well, starting in 2009, I had really my first intentional psychedelic experience where um, I sat down before taking them and got really in touch with what was it that I was seeking from the experience. And it was very basic at that time. I just wanted, I just wanted to have a deeper experience of what, what teachings the mushrooms might have, because that was part of the perspective that he, that Benjamin introduced to me was that you can learn things beyond yourself by eating this mushroom or by through psychedelic plants that they can actually bring to you information that you don't have, not just insights into yourself, but it can open your psyche into a greater realm. I thought this was fascinating and I wanted to have an experience of this. And so I, while I was experimenting with mushrooms, I also was listening to psychedelic talks by, <clears throat> by people like Terrence McKenna. And he was talking about, I was mostly listening to his talks about mushrooms, but he was also talking about DMT. He was talking about ayahuasca. And he was a big advocate also for basically intentional use of psychedelics and meditating with them in silence. And he said he doesn't understand how people can eat psychedelics and go to like big parties where there's lots of stimulation that to him, that sounds like a nightmare. And that to him, the perfect trip would be to take five grams of psilocybin mushrooms, sit alone in a dark room, an empty dark room with a bell and that if he ever started to feel like he was starting to freak out, all he would do have to do is ring the bell and a friend who was outside would just poke their head in and say, you're cool. And then close the door and leave him alone. And so he was really, he was further introducing this perspective that it's really the inner landscape as the mechanist called it. Um, that is of interest and by meditating and removing as much stimulus as possible, you increase your chances of going inward and experiencing yourself on a much deeper level than I think most people ever have before, uh, before a psychedelic, having psychedelic experiences. So I began to explore psychedelics in this way. And um, a lot of people were talking about, like my friends, they'd say that taking an eighth was like the full dose. And an eighth is 3.5 grams. So I started to just, I think every two weeks or so, I would eat mushrooms by myself in my room or just with one friend or I uh, started eating them with my girlfriend at the time. <clears throat> and I eventually worked my way up to doing a full eighth, which felt kind of scary because people had described that as being very intense and feeling a little bit out of control. And that seemed to be the threshold point for a lot of people where things started to get serious. It wasn't just like trees breathing and just kind of a, a, a gentle, fun experience, but real things started to happen at that point. So I remember the first time I took 3.5 grams. Well, I was inside and I could feel the walls breathing. I could feel like the carpet breathing. I could feel myself breathing or not breathing, holding my breath. And I remember I had like a lot of anxiety as the mushrooms were coming on, which can take about 20 to 45 minutes perhaps. And there's just this rising of this like, feels like my body is vibrating and especially like my mind is vibrating or my visual field. And there also is kind of some nausea that can come along with eating just the, the raw dried mushrooms 
without making a tea or anything. And that's how I always did it. I just would eat them. And so there's a niche, this initial kind of wave of discomfort that I often found in the very beginning that would come. Um, but this would eventually pass. And the, during that, during that initial phase, it felt like I was ramping up to the energy level that I would eventually sustain for, uh, several hours at the, the peak of the experience. And, um, I remember getting to the peak of that experience with one eight and I had this strange feeling that like, I thought I would feel very, very different from the way that I usually do. And in a sense I did, but I actually felt more like myself than I ever had before. And I, I felt like the mushrooms helped me expand into basically parts of my psyche or parts of myself that I didn't normally have access to. I felt like I had a greater sense of awareness and perception. I felt like when I talked with people, I could understand them better. I could, I could actually feel them in a way as if they were my own self. And it wasn't just this separate me and the separate trying to understand the separate them. But I was just taking in more and kind of understanding things in a way that I couldn't quite explain. And I remember having another experience, taking a full eighth, and where I felt like I could expand the limits of my body and more so my energy body, which I didn't have a name for that or know what it was, but I could feel my physical body and I could feel this energy body that was this part of me that was vibrating. And I could somehow expand that, f that energy field of myself. And I remember one time I did this to where I expanded my field to encompass the entire room that I was in with a couple other friends. And I remember someone getting up and walking across the room and as they were walking on the carpet, I could feel the car. I could feel them walking on the carpet as if they were walking on my own skin. I could feel the weight of their foot to press the carpet. And then after they had passed, I could feel the carpet slowly spring back. And uh, another time somebody dropped something, I could feel this, the object drop through the air and hit the ground and bounce off as it was as if it was my own body very unusual experience but somehow it felt it felt really comfortable i felt like this is who i should be all the time this is who i want to be all the time and i just don't have access to that yet in normal consciousness but perhaps there's a way that i can learn to be through these experiences, perhaps the mushrooms can teach me like what, what this is or how to access this or how I'm holding myself back most of all. And so while I was having pretty strong experiences with f taking a full eighth, I began to feel pretty confident at that dose. And I felt like that point of maximum expansion that I was getting to just wasn't quite, I felt like there was more of me to go that I wanted to expand into. And so I started to think about taking larger doses. And one thing that Terrence McKenna talked about, he spoke about the heroic dose. Now the heroic dose is five grams of mushrooms, which is quite a lot. Um, definitely more of an advanced dose and not something that anyone would want to take on their first time or really, I mean, it's, I, I'm not going to say it's dangerous, but it's definitely quite, quite a lot. It's a, it's a heavy duty experience. So aptly named the heroic dose, you have to have a lot of courage to do that. And so I started entertaining the idea of working up to the heroic dose. So I took a four gram dose and felt like I could still go farther. I took four and a half 
And eventually I took a five gram dose. And the five gram dose is, uh, it's not, it's only a gram and a half more than an eighth, but it felt twice as strong. And I, and I'm not even sure how to tell you what I experienced, but I felt not just like I could feel my physical environment more, but somehow I could just understand things. I just had sort of like a psychic knowing where I started to tap into that ability to know things beyond myself. Um, and to be honest, I can't really remember any specifics. It, it was a, a while ago now, and nine years ago. Um, but anyhow, I started to feel very confident with this. And I started to feel like invincible or very powerful doing this. And by now I was taking mushrooms between two and four times per month on the regular. And this is, I didn't feel like it was dangerous and I still don't feel like it was dangerous. And mushrooms actually, you can't take them too much because you build a, a tolerance you can basically only take them really like once per week maybe a little bit more often but if you try to take mushrooms one day and then the very next day they're not going to work as well because you just your body kind of needs to I guess uh, filter them out and your tolerance has to go back down which can take a couple days so at, at my peak of exploration I was taking them about once per week and eventually I began to go beyond the heroic dose and I did a, a six gram journey and then seven grams. And now at seven grams, which is something that I guess very few people have done. I've met a couple other people that have done seven grams and I felt like I finally was nearing kind of the point that I wanted to be at where I, the mushrooms were helping me expand into a level of myself. Like I felt like who I am or who, maybe who we all are is incredibly powerful beings, so much more powerful than our human personalities know or our society or culture is even aware of. Um, I started to realize that we human beings, we have access to something beyond just maybe what mere animals do or beyond what most human beings even know about. So many people just lead their whole lives not knowing the true power that they hold inside of themselves. And I, I had no idea. Like, <clears throat> And even if someone had told me, I would have been curious, but really having the experience of this expanded state of consciousness where I could, I start, I started to feel like I could access any information. I felt like I could read people's minds. I felt like if I wanted to, I could move objects with my mind. And I just started to wonder like what's even possible or that perhaps what's possible is only limited by our mind by our consciousness is it possible that we set our own limitations and i just started to feel almost like a superhero that the keys to unlocking my own power fully exist within me and that in these expanded states yeah i could just somehow start to like figure out this grand puzzle so I had taken maybe th um, three or four seven gram journeys and felt pretty, pretty close to where I wanted to be. But, and also that I was exploring often enough that I thought I would buy some mushrooms in bulk uh, to save a little bit of money. So I went out and bought two ounces of mushrooms and that's 28 grams, I think. Is that right? 
No, it's more. It's uh, double that. Anyhow, so the t the two ounces came in eight bags of seven grams each. And um, what I did was I laid out all eight bags and I, I looked at them and I tried to determine which one looked to be the strongest out of the eight and that I was going to eat that one. And the one that looked the strongest to me had a, a giant cap in it, a giant golden cap, probably like larger than a half dollar. It was mostly caps and some tiny stems. And I thought, <clears throat> well, I'm really ready to go. I, I don't want to eat more than seven grams, but I'm going to eat a strong seven grams. So I get together with some friends. Um, I'm down in Santa Cruz at the time. And uh, a good friend of mine came to visit me who he had never done mushrooms before, but he was a friend from college. I was out of college by now. And so he came to visit and he wanted to eat mushrooms with me. And I told him that I'm going to be doing a big dose that day. Uh, and I asked him, how much do you want to take? And he's like, oh, give me the regular amount. I was like, well, a lot of people say the, f the full amount is an eighth, but are you sure you want to do that your first time? And he said, he said, yeah, just give me that. He's a courageous fellow. So a couple of us go down to the beach, make a bonfire, and we sit around. And now I introduced my my college buddy to the perspective about taking mushrooms intentionally and to get in touch with what it is that he wants to experience or what he, he wants to gain. And so we sat around the fire and I think we sh we went around this, our small circle there, maybe five people and shared what our intentions were. And then we ate our mushrooms and I ate this whole bag, the seven gram bag of mushrooms. And so now, by now I had become used to this period of time, um, the onset, and it would usually take about 45 minutes and I would get some nausea and I would, there'd be this uncomfortable ramping up field as I described before. However, this time was different than any other time before. Um, and within about five minutes, I started to feel them. And I thought, oh, that's unusual. Five minutes. And then within 10 minutes, the mushrooms had ramped up for between five and 10 minutes had gone to the strongest experience I had ever felt on seven grams of mushrooms. Even like my, my seven gram trips before at 10 minutes, I was at that point. And at 15 minutes, I was beyond it. And I started to actually get worried because I realized that this was going to be a mega trip. Like this is, was going to be entirely different. And I had, I had been tiptoeing up to the edge of the abyss all this time. And I had just flung myself off the cliff without even realizing it. And so basically now I'm sitting on the sand in the beach. It's been 15 minutes and I'm kind of holding on for dear life. I'm like, I'm, I'm sitting on my butt and I've got both hands next to me and I'm gripping the sand and I'm breathing deeply and slowly. And I'm, there's so much energy traveling through my body and vibrating my cells and vibrating my psyche. And when I open my eyes, everything is like, vibrating and blurry and there's strange shapes and colors that I'm not sure what's there and what's not there. And then I start to hear this sound and it's a sound in my head. I can tell it's, and it's coming from behind me and to the right. And it's this roaring sound. It sounds like the wind and it's very far away and I can hear something coming towards me, this roaring sound. And I don't even bother my to turn my head to look because I can feel it. It's like not in the physical space, it's in the psychic space. And there's something that happens when you're on that much mushrooms where you open up into this new sphere of psychic space where 
just like you can look around with your eyes and your physical space and see different places. You can look around with your mind in the psychic, psychic space and it kind of overlaps physical space. Um, but you can actually see things there and, and hear things in this other realm. People call it the astral realm. I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know anything about any of this stuff. Uh, I was just experiencing it. So I hear this sound and I feel this energy kind of flying towards me from back into the right. And as it's getting closer, the vibrations of it are getting more powerful and the sound is getting louder. And I start to like, I'm extremely anxious and on the edge of freaking out. And I stand up and I dig my toes into the sand and I have my arms at my side and they're extended and I have my arm, my, my hands like pushed, pushed all the way out with my shoulders down. And I'm just trying to stabilize myself as best as I can. And I have my eyes open now. And as this energy or power is approaching me, I began to, the, the edges of my visual field start to blur. And as this thing is approaching me and getting louder and louder and stronger and stronger, my, this, this kind of like snow, like on an old TV, when an old TV goes out, this snow starts to encroach upon my visual field. And I feel this psychic pressure, there's something pressing in on me and, and overpowering me. And I'm pushing out to try to keep it at bay with the full power of my being, everything that I can muster, everything that I know how. I don't even know how I'm doing this, but I kind of felt like Professor Xavier in one of the, those the X-Men movies when this is totally a nerd reference, but... Jean Grey is going crazy and attacking him with psychic powers and just like ripping apart all like houses and furniture and he's only keeping her at bay with his psychic power is what it felt like, like being completely overwhelmed and just slowly stripped away. And this power is, it basically, it's so strong and, and it almost completely has me that I realize that I'm not going to be able to fight it. And so in that moment, I just let go. Like I just stop fighting entirely and it collapses my visual field in a single instant. And in that instant, I awoke or I just, it was like changing the channel. It was like a snap of a finger and I was in a different place. I was a hundred yards down the beach and standing right next to the water where our campfire was, was like well back from the water. And I felt, and in an instant I teleported and the ocean, it was almost dark. Now the ocean crashed, this wave crash and washed up over my feet. And I was shaking now. I was like, shaking from anxiety and like borderline terror. I wasn't freaking out, but I was just so, I felt so out of control and had and confused. I had no idea what was going on. And really before I could even do much of anything, it had been maybe five or 10 seconds, I started to hear the sound again. And I started to feel that power again coming for me. And I just thought, oh shit, here it comes again. <laughs> and I tried to fight it. S s same thing as before, as it's getting closer, the snow starts to encroach on my field and it starts to come after me. And again, I'm not, I don't have the power to fight it. And I give up at that last moment and boom, collapses my field. Now, again, like changing a channel, I'm in a completely different place. I'm about a quarter mile away in a single instant. Now, before, when I say I have the experience of teleporting, I felt like I was legitimately teleporting across the beach. And I guess late, later on, I questioned, well, 
is it possible that I blacked out and walked somewhere else? Um, I don't have an answer for that. I really have no idea. But in my sincere experience, I teleported a quarter mile away in a single instant. Um, and I'm not opposed to th that being possible. I think many strange things are possible. So now I just felt, I felt helpless. I felt powerless. I felt humbled, extremely humbled. Uh, thankfully, whatever that power was, uh, decided to leave me alone now. And uh, instead of, before I was next to the ocean, now I was up against the ocean cliff, like well back of it and far away from the campfire. I had to look around and try and figure out where on the beach I was and I could see my friends and I could see the fire uh, a ways away and my body at this point felt extremely uncomfortable and my digestion was moving which is something that mushrooms can do uh, and actually a lot of psychedelics can do uh, make you have to poop um, acid MDMA ayahuasca mushrooms uh, San Pedro, all of these things have made me have to poop. And, um, it's part of the cleansing experience. I think, uh, I don't entirely know, or maybe it's just the body's response to these powerful substances. But in many cases, um, it's kind of a funny thing to talk about, but in many cases, taking a poop on a trip is kind of a rite of passage and after after uh taking care of that business the trip can often go in a new direction and often a brighter direction uh, it's sort of like necessary to uh, move some energies along with that uh, by taking a poop so i was by myself against the cliff and I had to poop and I could actually barely stand. I was crawling. I actually couldn't even stand up. I felt like wrecked in my body. I, did, I felt terrible. Um, so I had to find a way to just take care of my business and uh, use some just leaves around. And I hobbled my way back to the campsite after that. And when I walked up, my friends saw me and they're like, dude, where have you been? And I was like, oh my God, I don't even know where to start. Like I was freaking teleporting across the beach and they're like, and they're all high too. Like, <laughs> um, they're just basically like, whoa, that's weird. I don't know. So I asked them how long I had been gone. I felt like I had probably been gone about 20 minutes or half an hour. Um, that the teleporting took no time and uh, handling my business took about 20 to 30 minutes. And they said I had been gone two hours. And that was shocking to me. And uh, I don't entirely trust them because they were on mushrooms. And mushrooms can kind of dilate your time, your sense of time. But uh, nevertheless, this was the report. And so... For me, that was the last time that I took mushrooms for a little while. Uh, and I felt like I was kind of chasing the dragon and the dragon finally bit me. <clears throat> and I learned a valuable lesson that day that um, like, I really felt kind of like a superhero before that. Sort of, I felt really powerful and I felt... maybe not more powerful than the mushrooms, but I hadn't been, I hadn't had an experience like that to humble me. And I think in a way I needed that because I just kept taking more and more and felt like I could do more and more. And even though I did so slowly and carefully over time, um, I just, it was like, that was the point where I really felt overconfident was when I looked at that bag with all those caps and was like, I can handle this. 
I felt uh, like at that point I could do anything. And, um, yeah, so I learned to respect the, the mushroom. And after that, with all the other plant medicines I tried, I learned to respect them and that they hold a power that's much greater than myself. And, um, and I do respect them as teachers, not just a teacher in that way of like hard lessons, but later I learned how to open to them more gently. Like I, I later realized that I was kind of going the path of force and in general, I was kind of a thrill seeker at that point in my life, in my, uh, mid twenties, I suppose. And, uh, I like to do exciting things. I like to, I like to speed down the freeway. Uh, I like to speed down the mountain on my snowboard. I would ride so fast down the mountain through the trees on my snowboard. What I liked to do was go so fast that I didn't really have time to think that all I had time to do was react and to left, right, left, right. And it was super dangerous. I mean, if I had crashed into a tree, I would have been super hurt. And I almost got really hurt once. Um, but it made me feel alive to, to get my adrenaline pumping like that. And I'm such a mental person. I'm like always in my head and doing things like that got me into a flow state where I felt, I felt powerful basically. And I was really, I felt at that time and I still feel like I'm a powerful person. I think we're all powerful people. And I was trying to get in touch with that, but I was going about it in a very kind of forceful, dangerous, uh, manner. And after this seven gram mushroom experience, I learned to, to soften a bit. Uh, and what I mean by that is I learned that I didn't have to go in there and take the treasure from the dragon, chasing the dragon. I didn't have to go steal the dragon's treasure. I just had to become friends with it. And that um, these plants and this fungus will offer their jewels willingly to those who are humble, humility being the key. And I took a long break at that point from mushrooms and from all psychedelics. But... <clears throat> At a later point, I began to feel, <clears throat> began to feel the call to go back. And when I did go back, I took just a little bit and I sat by myself and I meditated and I, and I listened and I wasn't, this was different that, to that, just trying to get expanded as possible, but I just tried to listen to what was there in, in that little bit. And what I ended up hearing was the voice of the mushroom, I think in a way that I never had before. I never had actually listened. And when I say the voice of the mushroom, it's not, it wasn't like a literal voice to me. It was like, um, just a knowingness or, um, a contact with a, a consciousness that wasn't my own consciousness on that kind of psychic in that psychic space and it's different. It's a different type of language or different type of communication than what we're used to with visual or verbal. It's just like more of a mental or psychic. And what this voice told me was that what mushrooms wanted, what the spirit of the mushroom wanted was to be used ceremonially and not just intentionally, but ceremonially. And that there are plant medicines that have traditions and ceremonies like ayahuasca. Ayahuasca pretty much only happens within a ceremony unless it's a foolish person who gets a hold of some and decides to do their own thing. But for the most part, ayahuasca is not being done recreationally. It's being done ceremonially. Same with peyote and, and same with other 
sacred plant medicines from uh, human traditions around the world. And what the, this mushroom told me was that the, the, the spirit of the mushroom wanted there to be a mushroom ceremony that, that, and what, what, what it told me was that in the proper, done in the proper way, mushrooms can be just as powerful as ayahuasca or just as powerful as peyote. And many people think of mushrooms as just kind of like a beginner psychedelic, which I think it's a friendly psychedelic and it's, it's a little bit easier to handle than some, than say ayahuasca that can bring a very dark experience. But the mushrooms were telling me that, um, it's no less powerful than the other, than the other ones. It just, it just needs that ceremonial context. And so it made me an offering and the offering was to build, build a ceremony together with me. And, um, and the, the spirit of the mushroom is, it is very friendly. It just kind of, it's very playful. It's kind of, it's kind of like a trickster, but the way that you're f a good friend plays tricks on you, it sort of jokes around. It's hard to describe, but um, it's very, and it's very small. It feels like, I don't know, gnome-like or um, just like a fairy forest creature that, um, and they, the mushrooms do, they, they, they hide under leaves and things like that. Like they, they, uh, they push up from the ground, right? So they can, yeah, I don't know that, um, they also grow on poop too. Of course they grow on cow poop and things like that, but psilocybin mushrooms can be just found in the forest as well, growing like any other mushroom. So I decided to take up this call and decided that, sure, why not try and just explore this offering a little more and explore what it might be like to, to hold a mushroom ceremony. And um, I got together one or two friends. Well, I told some people about this and one or two friends were very interested in, in doing this. And so we did a series of mushroom ceremonies together. And actually one of these friends, um, later she became an, uh, an ayahuascara. She, I mean, this was years ago. This was 2010, I think at this point. And I don't know, I hadn't drank ay ayahuasca at that point, And I don't think she had either, but. Uh, I'm just thinking, I'm just reflecting on this in this moment. And she's actually one of the people I'm going to interview in Santa Cruz, which is, which will be exciting. But, um, yeah, she and I and another person built a mushroom ceremony t together. And, um, well, the, the experience of doing that was a little bit more difficult than I expected. And, uh, I don't know that there's anything really of great value to share other than like I, I experimented with just having it be very open-ended and I found that um, it's important to have good strong boundaries in a ceremony and and some some rules uh, I was very anti-rule at that point just like let's be as open and expanded as possible but there's certain things guidelines for other people like, man, I had, I had one person in a ceremony just like once the mushrooms came on, he, well, he said, he said at the beginning that his intention for the ceremony was to get in touch with his shame, that he had like a sense of internal shame that he wanted to work on. And, um, the way that he ended up exploring that in the ceremony was to like crawl on other people and just, and just to like, he was being kind of weird and like putting his face right in front of other people's faces. And that was his way of like getting in touch with his shame, but it was disruptive and uncomfortable 
and I think inappropriate. And anyhow, um, I, I ended up learning a lot more about ceremony through actually doing ayahuasca ceremony and seeing, seeing the kind of more structured fashion that's, uh, of how these traditions have, have built these ceremonies over thousands of years. And anyhow, um, I, I feel like, uh, I've come to the point, the end point of this story. I made it almost an hour, which is cool. Um, yeah, this was, this was very experimental for me to do this. I've told this story before in person, but never in this fashion. And uh, I, hope, I hope it came across in a way that was fun and interesting for you. Uh, I have many more stories to tell. Um, and those, I, I think I'll sprinkle them in the show th throughout um, points of hearing other people's stories too. But, it, but it's a fun thought to share my own. And that's part of the reason I created this podcast, Chronicles of a Psychonaut. Every, all of us, we're all the psychonauts, but... I am too, and I have some very unusual experiences and um, have kind of gone to levels with things that uh, I'd say most people haven't experienced. And um, let's see, some other stories for future points. Uh, the time that I took LSD and it told me I was Jesus Christ which was pretty crazy. Um, uh, I've seen UFOs. I've had actually like several UFO encounters on psychedelics, on mushrooms and ayahuasca. And not just like, oh, like I, uh, you know, not like my, my eyes aren't working and the stars look like they're moving or I can't like that star just moved. No, not like that. Like, like spaceships flying up close and, me seeing them and other people seeing them too. Um, and yeah, trippy encounters with non-humanoid intelligence on the astral plane, uh, all kinds of stuff. So I'm kind of a shy and introverted person by nature. And, um, it's, uh, these stories have always been very personal to me. I've, I, most of my friends probably haven't even heard them. I just tell them when I feel like it on the rare occasion. So, uh, it's unusual for me to share in this fashion, but I don't know. It just feels important to do so at this time. And I think that psychedelic use is becoming more mainstream. It's becoming more socially acceptable. I think it's going to become legal eventually at some point where uh, there's more and more studies being done that show that there is a positive benefit to psychedelics. And I think as a society, we're really at the very, very opening edge of rediscovering our own shamanic roots. So many cultures are in touch with their shamanic roots from around the world and Western culture is not. We have an ancient tradition like a pagan tradition long ago that was more or less stamped out or changed or lost uh, largely due to the impact of re religion, organized religion. Um, but I think we're starting to come back into discovering these ways and th we're making a lot of beginner mistakes too. Um, I know a lot of people that have had terrifying harrowing psychedelic experiences. Um, and I think it's important to tell all of these stories, to tell the stories, uh, the terrifying ones, so that, you know, we can, we can learn from each other. It's also important to tell the, the stories of great breakthroughs. So that's something that um, we all can uh, be excited for in the future. And uh, so with that, I'll close this episode. If you want to let me know what you think, you can always comment on my posts on, f on my Facebook page, Chronicles of a Psychonaut. You can do the same on my Instagram 
at Chronicles of a Psychonaut. And I think that's it. Thanks very much. See you next time.